Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new OnePlus Pad from OnePlus. This is their first Android tablet to market and on paper it actually looks like a really powerful little tablet. I've had a couple days to mess around with it and overall I've been enjoying the user experience here. We've got a beautiful 11.6 inch 144 Hz IPS display, quad speakers offering amazing sound, and a very powerful CPU here. Initially when they announced this I was hoping to see something like the Snapdragon Gen 2 or at least Gen 1 because we know what kind of performance that offers, but they've gone with the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 and I'm pleasantly surprised by the performance this thing puts out on the CPU and GPU side of things. 4K video playback, even though we don't have quite a 4K display, is totally possible here. Gaming, super smooth, emulation, awesome, and we're going to be testing out a bunch of stuff. But uh, around back here, you can see we've got this big camera. And personally, I'm not a huge fan of this. We've got that OnePlus camera. It's a 13 megapixel. I'm not going to be taking many pictures on a tablet. But some people out there might. Now, going around the tablet, down here, we've got two of our quad speakers set up. And this thing does get loud. It's actually got some bass. Moving over to the other side, we've got USB 2.0, and that's kind of a letdown because I was hoping that this would do video out of USB Type-C. Unfortunately, everything I've tried does not allow me to do any kind of video out of this unit. And over here, we've got our volume rocker and our fingerprint sensor. Like I mentioned, when it comes to that CPU they opted to use, this thing does offer much better performance than I thought it would. We've got the MediaTek Dimensity 9000. It's an 8-core SoC, and we've got one Cortex-X2 core running at 3.05 GHz, three A710 cores running at 2.85, and four A510 cores running at 1.8. When it comes to the GPU, we've got the Mali G710 MC10, so we've got that 10-core GPU. You can opt to pick this up with either 8 or 12 gigs of RAM, and the storage is going to change from there. The 8 gig model comes with 28, the 12 gig model comes with 256, but all of them have this 144 Hz 11.6 inch IPS display with a resolution of 2000 by 2800. It does support Dolby Vision, HDR10+, and we've got a maximum brightness of 500 nits. I'll tell you, even though it's an IPS, it's not AMOLED, this thing really pops. Quad speakers all the way around, a 9,510 milliamp hour battery, and this is running Oxygen OS 13.1, which is based on Android 13. If you're not familiar with OnePlus, they use the Oxygen OS interface here. In this video, we're going to get a feel for the overall performance that this device can offer. We're going to test out some 4K video playback. We're also going to test out some native Android gaming and emulation. But since this is the first time I've been able to get my hands on the Dimensity 9000, I do want to make a follow-up emulation video because what I've tested so far looks really great for this chipset. The overall user interface is very snappy, and I expected it would be. I didn't think they were going to release a slow tablet, something like an older Amazon Fire tablet or something like that. Everything loads up really quickly. We do have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 built in. Google Play is pre-installed, in case anybody was wondering. With Oxygen OS, it's not kind of a dumbed-down version of Android. There's actually quite a bit built into this, and uh, I think they've done a great job with this operating system over the years. Very easy to navigate and super quick. Now, the one thing I always like to take a look at is just kind of the Widevine version with these tablets. And if you're not familiar with Widevine, it's basically video playback DRM in Android. If you didn't have the correct version, which we do have level one here, so it's not a problem, you can't do HD playback from a lot of the more popular streaming apps like Netflix, HBO, Hulu, and many others just won't support HD. But since we're running level one here with the OnePlus pad, we're not going to have an issue doing HD with any of those apps we want. And speaking of HD playback, I figured we'd go ahead and test out a little bit of YouTube video playback. And with this, we're going to go up to 4K. This is a 4K 60 HDR video. Remember, this 11.6 inch display does support HDR. Make sure we're at 4K. I've also got Stats for Nerds on in the top left hand corner so we can see what's going on. And uh, we are running this at 4K even though we don't have a 4K display. It's still trying to render out there and the CPU is taking quite a hit but we don't have any drop frames. And the quad speaker setup they chose to use here is really loud. Very surprised by the sound output here. And given that we're working with such a thin tablet, it does put out quite a lot of bass. Now it's not better than something like the Galaxy Tab SA Ultra or even the iPad Pro, but it's getting really, really close. So if you wanted to pick one of these up strictly for media playback, it's something that I could recommend. You're not going to have an issue playing 1440p video from any of your favorite apps, and it does output some great sound. I also wanted to give you a look at some benchmarks that I ran on this tablet. First up, we've got Geekbench 6. 
Single core, 1,064, multi, 3,296. So I was actually expecting a little more out of single core given we're using that X2 core, but you know, the overall feel and everything, it's kind of on par with what this thing should be. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, we've got 3D Mark Wildlife. Total score here, 7,495, and this is a Vulcan benchmark for that Mali GPU. And the final one I ran was Antutu, coming in with a total score of 844,917. If we take a look at this compared to something like the Snapdragon Gen 1 and the Galaxy 8, 8 Plus, and 8 Ultra, on average, that's around 940,000. So with this synthetic benchmark, yeah, that Snapdragon Gen 1 can beat out the Dimensity 9000. But these are synthetic benchmarks. Let's see how this thing handles real-world native Android gaming. And the first one we've got here is Car X Drift Racing 2. This was one that was up at the top. I've got it maxed out in the settings at 60 FPS using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. And as you can see, it's super smooth. Unfortunately, we don't have a built-in FPS counter with Oxygen OS, at least one that I can't find right now. But if I had to say, yeah, I mean, this is at a constant 60. I've played a lot of these games and I kind of know how they feel. Moving over to Call of Duty Mobile. Very well optimized game, again still using that Xbox One controller, high settings, 60 FPS. From the settings I couldn't go up to 90 with it for some reason. I don't know if the tablet's been whitelisted by the developer yet or you know because I was at high settings I could only go to 60, but it plays fine and I really expected it to. This is one of those games you can actually play on a cheaper $50 Android phone at low settings and have a good time with it. And the final native Android game that I wanted to test is definitely a harder one to run. We've got Genshin Impact. From the settings, I'm at medium, 60 FPS, and I'd say taking a few of these settings down to low would be the way to go because we do get some stutters. Definitely playable, looks great on this display, and when it comes down to it, it has a lot to do with the development on Android. We still don't have controller support on Android, at least without using a third-party application, and it just seems the developers spend a lot of time with, you know, Apple versus Android. I think we could get a lot better performance out of this game on most of the devices that we have in our pocket if they spend a little more time with it. Native Android gaming on this tablet works out really well. Basically any game that you can download from Google Play or sideload will run at full speed depending on the settings you use, but one of the main things I wanted to take a look at with this Dimensity 9000 CPU was emulation. And first up, we've got some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. Automotolista, one of the harder ones to emulate, kind of my go-to test. We are at 720p using the OpenGL back end. I didn't even swap over to Vulkan yet. So in my next video, you know, the dedicated emulation video, we'll be testing out a lot more. But this has been really great. Like I mentioned, this is a harder one to emulate. I also wanted to show off at least one Wii game. So we've got Tatsunoko versus Capcom, one of my favorite fighting games ever made. Still at 720p, OpenGL back end, running at a constant 60. The Dolphin emulator has definitely come a long way on Android, and even on some lower end chipsets at 1x resolution, we can get full speed with a lot of this stuff. So in my next one, I do want to test out some harder to emulate games like F-Zero GX, and we'll even throw Rogue Squadron at it, but I don't think we're going to get full speed out of that game no matter what settings we use. And of course, I wanted to show off just a little more emulation in this video, so we've got some PS2 using Ether SX2, God of War 2, 1x resolution. I tried 2x resolution and 1.5, but we did have those dips under 60, so I got a little tweaking that I need to do with the settings here, but so far, it's not bad for PS2 either. So GameCube, Wii, PS2, of course, when it comes to the easier to emulate stuff, Dreamcast, PSP, you're not going to have an issue with this tablet, and uh, we can upscale really high with those emulators also, and it's going to look great on this display. Now one thing that really surprised me when I unboxed this unit was the fact that they included a charger. Most new tablets and phones don't include a charger, and that's even talking about like a $1300 Galaxy Tab SA Ultra didn't have a charger whatsoever in the box at that price point. And the great thing here, it's not an ordinary charger, it's not a slow charger or anything like that, it's actually an 80 watt fast charger, and we can go from 0 to 100% on the battery in 1 hour and 22 minutes. And when it comes to battery life, I ran a video on loop. 80% brightness, 11 hours, and 37 minutes. So we're getting some good battery life here. And you know, when it comes to gaming, it's going to pull a lot more energy. I'd say you could game on this for a good five hours before you need to charge it up. So overall, I've been really enjoying the OnePlus pad. We've got a beautiful screen, great sound, awesome performance. Would have been nice if they didn't have that giant 13 megapixel camera around back, but you know, with the case on it, you wouldn't even notice it. 
If you're in the market for an Android tablet and you don't want to spend $1,000 on a Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, then you could definitely go with something like this and be really happy with the performance it puts out. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I will have at least one more video coming up. We're going to do a full emulation test on the OnePlus pad. But in the meantime, if you're interested in learning a little more, maybe picking one of these up, I will leave a couple links in the description. And if you've got any questions, let me know down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.